Last week we began talking about the Word made flesh, about Jesus coming into this world, um, God becoming a person um, to give us life. And that's what our Christmas season is all about. And that's what we're going to be looking at over these next couple of weeks as, as well, is the Word made flesh. And what does that mean in our lives? And instead of just reading the stories about the birth of Christ and all that was that surrounded the birth of Christ, we're looking at the life of Christ, looking at a chapter, um, looking at a passage out of um, each one of the of the Gospels over these these few weeks, and something about the event that Jesus was involved in to remind us of the importance of the Word made flesh, Jesus becoming a person, and our response to the Word. And so today we're going to look at that from Luke chapter 10. So I'm going to look at Luke chapter 10 and read verses 38 through 42. Luke 10, 38 to 42. Now as they were traveling along, he entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister called Mary, who was seated at the Lord's feet, listening to his word. But Martha was distracted with all her preparations and she came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Then tell her to help me. But the Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things, but only one thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. So what do we do with Martha in this story. I've heard a lot of people talk about Martha and about Mary and about the importance of Mary and maybe maybe a little bit of the unimportance of Martha in, in sermons and stories and talks about it. Um, people, I've heard sermons giving the advantages and disadvantages of being a Martha. Maybe some of you ladies look at yourself and think of, of yourself as a Martha. You're the one who does all the kitchen work. You get the meal ready. You make sure everything is in order. And sometimes you might even look at a passage like this and think, well, is the Lord down on Martha's? Is that what's happening here? But I want you to know that just two chapters earlier, there's a list of women followers of Jesus. Luke gives this list. And it says that, Luke tells us that these ladies contributed to support Jesus and his followers with, from their own personal finances. So, I mean, you have to think about it. How did Jesus and the disciples eat along the way during that three years of ministry? Well, Luke gives us an example of this. These ladies were there as part of their ministry, helping with some of those needs. And so we can see, yes, um, a Martha is important. And I don't know if there's a man equivalent to a Martha here, um, but that'd be another story another time. But this, this sermon today is not about personalities, of the type of person that you are and how you look at situations around you and how you respond to those situations. The, this passage is about focus. And that's what we need to look at when we look at this passage of Scripture. So as I mentioned, our theme is the Word made flesh. We see that from John chapter 1. At the very beginning of John 1, we read about, about the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God and all this. And then down, um, I think around verse 14, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And so that, that is John's nativity story. That's all you're going to get from John about the birth of Christ, that the Word was made flesh. And so since the Word is made flesh, as we mentioned, we need to respond to the word of God in our lives. We need to respond to Jesus. And today I want us to respond by listening to the word. We see the example of that here in this passage of scripture, that we listen to the word. And let's, let's, let's break that down a little bit of what, what I'm talking about when I say listen to the word. First of all, we listen to the word during this Christmas season. Now, this Christmas season part's not in the Bible, obviously, like this, but um, we're gonna, we can learn some things from this situation. Martha was distracted, right? The Bible tells us that. Verse 40, but Martha was distracted with all her preparation. So that's something about Martha in this event. That was the problem. Um, the problem wasn't that she had this personality and she was involved in the preparations and that's what she did. 
The problem was she was distracted and overwhelmed and she was stressed. This is the time of the year that we can get distracted and overwhelmed and we can get stressed. And if that's happening to you, then you've totally missed the point of Christmas. This is a time to celebrate. It's a time to focus that God has come into this world to offer us salvation. And if we get so um, upset by all the other activities that we can be involved in, then we've missed the point of the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, of following him, seeing his life, learning from him, and serving him. And so, from the story, we need to be more like Mary here and listen to Jesus. We need to listen to the word. Verse 39. She had a sister called Mary, who was seated at the Lord's feet, listening to his word, which is probably something pretty uncommon in that day for a woman in the house to be there at the feet of Jesus. But she was there listening to the words of Jesus. Now, again, the problem was not that Martha was doing the housework. That wasn't the problem. The problem was she was distracted. And so we need to remove the distractions. We need to remove the distractions, and we need to listen to Jesus. We need to listen to the Word. Jesus is our Lord and Savior, and He speaks to us. Therefore, we need to listen to Him. Listen to the Word. Listen to Jesus. Secondly, we find that we need to listen to the Word that tells us that God does care. We need to know that. That's a, that's a message from the Bible that we need to know in our lives at all times. So I need to find out if, and you don't have to answer this out loud, but I need to find out if you're honest with God. And if you're honest with God, do you ever complain to God that you don't like how he's running things, right? Maybe it's a very spiritual prayer, but somehow you're saying to God, I don't like the way that you are running things. Or maybe you join the rhetoric that we seem to hear in the world around us. If God was a loving God, then he would do this or he wouldn't allow that. Like we, as people, would really understand how a loving God and compassionate and holy and merciful and all the other things that the Bible says about God, that we would know better than him how a loving God should act. But that's what people, they're ready to say it, right? If, if God were a loving God, he wouldn't do this or he wouldn't allow that. Well, I guess Martha felt that she could tell Jesus what was on her mind. Verse 40, she came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Don't you care? That was what she asked Jesus. And we have to ask ourselves, do we say this to God? Do we say this to Jesus? Jesus, don't you care? Don't you care about what I'm going through or what I'm feeling or what I'm experiencing right now? And when I start thinking about that, I wonder how trivial our complaints sound to God. Now, he loves us and he's listening to us, but think about you know taking care of the universe um, taking care of our salvation, you know, all these things in our lives, leading us, guiding us, and all this. And then we're going to give this complaint of things that we don't care about or that we think he doesn't care about. Because, for example, with Martha, now we know in the next chapter, so we're in chapter 10, in the next chapter, she's going to somehow send word to Jesus because Lazarus is sick and she doesn't want Lazarus to die. And so she sends word for Jesus to come and heal Lazarus. That's a big deal, okay? In fact, he was so sick that he did die. And Jesus, we know, delayed, and he came, and he came after he died, and we know that he raised Lazarus from the dead. And before he did all that, he had a conversation with Martha, and he had a conversation with Mary. And in his conversation with Martha, she said to him, I believe that you are the Messiah. You're the Savior. You're the one sent from God. So she didn't just think of him as just some guy. She thought of him as the Word made flesh. He's the Savior that has come. He's the Messiah that's, that's come. And so now backing up. So that's what she believes about God, believes about Jesus. Now we back up to where she is right now. And 
Here's the Messiah in your home, and the only thing you can think of is, don't you care that my sister's not helping with the housework? That seems a little bit trivial compared to all the big things that could be going on in the world. Now, I don't want to give Martha a hard time because we do the same thing. We, we get upset with God and we say, don't you care about what I'm going through? And sometimes when we really start thinking about it, are we, you know, is it that big of a deal? Or, you know, uh, are we just taking all the little things that go on in life and just, just complaining about them? Now, the disciples also challenged Jesus about if he cared. Um, they were in a boat, storm came in, they felt like the boat was going to be swamped and sunk, and um, Jesus is asleep on a cushion, right? And so they go over, shake him, wake him up, and say, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Well, he would perish too, right? Don't you care? Don't you care about this situation? And so I do believe at times we might have that thought in our mind that God doesn't care, that he doesn't care about me in this situation. Uh, I think that people think that way when things don't go our way, when prayers aren't answered the way that we want them to be answered, when we have a tragedy in life, when there's a loss in life. I think there's times when we start wondering, does God even care? And maybe you voice it, maybe you just internalize it, but I think a lot of times we think that. So does God care? Does he care? Well, Peter thinks so. Peter was one of those guys in the boat that was you know, shaking Jesus and asking if, you, if he cares or not. But later on, Peter wrote in one of his letters, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. He quoted from the Old Testament when he, when he wrote that, but he believed it then, right? He learned, he sat back and he re realized, yeah, we can give God all of our cares, because he does care for us. He does care. In 1901, Frank Graff wrote a hymn asking that very question. Does Jesus care? Does Jesus care when my heart is pained too deeply for mirth or song? As the burdens press and the cares distress and the way grows weary and long. And then he writes three other verses talking about things that happen in life, asking that question, does Jesus care? Does Jesus care when my way is dark with fear? Does Jesus care when I've failed to resist temptation? Does Jesus care when a loved one dies? And so in this hymn, he keeps asking that question, does Jesus care? And after that, each one of those questions is the chorus. Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary and the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. And just like Peter knew and knew that Jesus cares, and this hymn writer, he knew that Jesus cares. We need to know in our life, we need to believe and understand the promise of God that God does care. And so when we are going through those difficult times in life, instead of just throwing out, do you care? Don't you care about this situation? Let's step back a little bit and remember the promises that God has made to us that we can believe. We need to listen to the word. And the word teaches us that God does care. He does care for us. Um, and as we grow in our faith and we grow in our understanding of Jesus, we will recognize more and more and more clearly that Jesus does care. That's why the word became flesh, because God cares, and he sent his son. So we need to listen to the word. And thirdly this morning, we need to listen to the word instead of worry. Listen to the word instead of worry. So Jesus replied to Martha, Martha, Martha. You are worried and bothered about so many things. That was her problem. Remember, distracted, worried, and bothered. Um, do we ever get that way? Do we get that way in life where we're distracted, we're worried, we're bothered? Well, here's what we need to do. Don't listen to the worry and the stress in your life. 
Don't listen to that because we need to listen to the word instead. The worry and stress will try to control you. Don't listen to it. Listen to Jesus instead. You know, what's on your mind? What's in your heart, your emotions? You know, we need to ask, what, what am I listening to in this life? In my emotions, what am I listening to? With my heart, what am I listening to? With my mind, what am I listening to in this life? Am I listening to all these negative things of worry and anxiety and being bothered and all that? Or am I listening to the Lord? Well, that's what we need to look at. Are, am I praying with thanksgiving or am I worried and anxious? Am I listening to my doubts um, that come from the devil and live it, listening to fear? Or am I listening to the Lord? You know, our minds are very powerful, right? Our minds are powerful. In fact, um, they can convince our bodies to do things. The mind is powerful enough to convince your body to do things that maybe at one point you didn't think that you could do. In fact, they find in competition when people compete that some of the, you know, that one of the reasons that um, some people win in a competition or are faster or stronger or better in a competition isn't because they're physically better than their opponent. It's just that in their mind, they believe that they can do it. They believe that they can win. That they have this competitive mind, and so that helps them to uh, achieve more than somebody with the same skill set that they have. And so we, have, we, we understand from that that our mind can get us to do a lot of things and it can convince us to think a lot of things. It could be positive or it could be negative. Now, as you know, as you know I had this cold this past week. You know, it started last weekend, sounded terrible last, last Sunday, sounding a little better today, but still have some of the congestion and, and the cough and all that. But, but, you know, through the whole week, I just stayed home. I just stayed home and, you know, I had the congestion, I had the headache, I didn't want to be around people and spread any germs and all that stuff, so I, I just stayed home. Well, um, I'm, I'm just a wimp when I get sick. I'm just a wimp. And so I don't, you know, I don't want to go out and do things. I, you know, I just don't want to, you know, I don't want to be that active. I just want to just, just try to get better. But one of the reasons I'm a wimp is, is what happens in my mind, because I, and it happened this week, just like it's happened before. And I, you know, I get a cold like this maybe once a year, you know, where it's a really bad one like this, you know, about once a year. And, but I think the same thing. When I'm in the middle of it, I'm thinking, will I ever be well again? <laughs> Am I going to be like this for the rest of my miserable life? I mean, I really start thinking that way. And I'm thinking, it's just a cold, right? It's just a cold. Get over it, right? And so, but your mind and your heart and your emotions, they're powerful, but what are they listening to? Don't listen to worry. Don't listen to anxiety. Don't listen to all the negative stress stuff in this life. We need to listen to the word instead of listening to worry. So we know that Jesus is the word made flesh. God became a person, lived among his people, died on that cross, defeated sin, rose from the, get, the dead. That's our gospel message. Last week, we saw that the word made flesh is the word of life who gives us eternal life. Today, we're encouraged to listen to the word and not all these other things in life. And so right now, right now where we are, you're probably busy in all the Christmas stuff and in this Christmas season and all these activities. And so t today, I want to encourage you, listen to the word and not be distracted. Don't get all distracted at this time of the year, but continue to listen to the word. And right now, um, um, whatever you're going through, you might be thinking things like, um, this is too tough, this is too hard. Is God involved in my life now? Has he left me? Um, you know, what's going on? Does he care? And so right now, I want to encourage you, right now, whatever you're going through, no matter how difficult it is, believe the promise of God that he does care. And, and go back and remember all the times that he's shown you that he cares. And right now, you might be in a time of worry or stress, and, and being all bothered about things, but that's the time 
to listen to the word and let the word lead you into maturity to move away from those negative emotions and thoughts. So I do believe that Martha listened to the word. I do believe that because scripture shows us that. Two chapters later, two chapters later, she doesn't seem all distracted and full of stress and worry. So it's in John chapter 12. Um, it, we're told that it's six days before the Passover, and this is the Passover time where Jesus is going to die on the cross. Um, Jesus is in Bethany eating with Lazarus, um, Lazarus, whom he's raised from the dead. So we get all, we've heard all this. Mary's the one who gets all the attention here because Mary comes in, has this um, jar of perfume, and she breaks the jar and pours the perfume on Jesus on his feet and anoints him. And that's when Judas says, what a waste. This should have been sold. We could have used it to um, feed the poor. All that conversation was going on. But again, Mary is involved in this honoring Jesus um, and, and anointing him. But there's a part, uh, just a little, little phrase in that passage of Scripture that I think gets overlooked by us as we read it. And it's a simple phrase, just says, and Martha served. See, Martha kept being a Martha. She kept serving. That's who she was. That's how she served the Lord. She took care of the meal. But she was, it doesn't say she was all distracted and worrying and complaining, right? Martha listened to Jesus. Let's listen to Jesus in our life. Let's pray. Father, thank you for um, this time and an opportunity to, um, to be able to open your word. And I pray, Father, that you'll continue to teach us and lead us and guide us I pray, Father, right now in this time that we can be busy and distracted, that we will uh, keep our eyes on you and remember your promises. In Jesus' name, amen. As we have our invitation song this morning, if there's a decision you need to make for the Lord, we want to give you that opportunity. If you have a prayer request, I'll be glad to pray with you. Let's stand together as we sing.